Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this May 22nd, 2015 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony, and you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can catch my show every evening, Monday through Friday, that's 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Now, if you want to go to my website, ArcticBeacon.com, that's A-R-C-T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N.com, You can get all the replays of these shows that I've been doing for years, and there's no charge whatsoever. No charge. You just go on the website, click on the story you want to read about, or you want to listen to old radio shows that I've done, and pick up some information regarding the real truth behind the Vatican-led New World Order. Uh, You can get that free. You know, I'm asking, though, if you... um, Want to keep the website uh, clicking and running? Uh, there's a donation button there, and uh, please uh, feel free to donate any amount that your income will allow. Now, uh, I was reading an article today regarding the number of new housing units going up in three major cities in our country, and 82% of them are for the top 1% of our country. Isn't that interesting? And most, some of them are renting at $50,000 a month. Now, who do you know that has $50,000 a month to rent an apartment? I also read an article that the country right now, since recorded whatever they've been recording financial statistics, and how true are those, but I think they want to just shove it in your face. The divide between the rich and the poor in America has never been greater. Then I read another article about how uh, the baby boomers are the last of the generations in America. You know, you know, Generation X, Y, Z, and then we have Generation, uh, what's coming up? Alpha, signifying the beginning of a new, what, new world order. But the baby boomers, you know, those of us who are getting up there in years, were the last generation that had an opportunity to buy a house, unless you were in the top 1% of the population. Then I happened to read an article by George Soros. You know who he is, billionaire Vaticanite who works for the New World Order. He said that, oh, we're on the verge of a world war with China. And then he was trying to give us guidelines on how to handle our money. Give me a break. These wars going all the way back to the beginning of time, have been orchestrated by the powers that be. And all of these countries work together. Then I happened to read an article, and and you don't think they work together? Well, all of them seem to, like, work together with chemtrails. They have planes flying all over airspace in the world. They They don't bother those airplanes that are spraying barium, that are spraying... Oh, what else are they spraying? aluminum, and all these really deadly, toxic materials into our atmosphere. But that's okay. China, Russia, America, Australia, we all work together on that. And you know what? We also work together on a treaty that's called the Antarctica Treaty. Do you realize that you can't go to Antarctica? And I bet you, you don't even know where it's at. How many people listening to my radio show has ever taken a rocket ship and looked at the Earth? I'll bet you not one person that's listening. But they're going to tell me that they understand exactly what this world is shaped like. They're going to also tell me that the maps that are given to us are exactly correct. They're also going to tell me that GPS is run by satellites, which, you know, how do they know? They believe Nazi NASA. That's how they believe it. And when you start really looking at it all, you start wondering, well, when Greg says that all wars are orchestrated, he's off his rocker. The Muslims hate the Christians. Terrorism is caused by people. Oh, these bikers out in uh, that Texas thing, they just arrested 175 bikers for some kind of thing now, and the bikers are now getting bombs together to fight the police. And you don't think that's orchestrated? 175 bikers, they're showing each picture and a million dollar bond on all of them. Now don't you think that that's been instigated? Of course it has. To create more conflict, 
Oh, to create this conflict between those people who are unruly so that we can lock down America. But the real interesting thing here, the real interesting thing is when Greg says that all wars are orchestrated and terrorism is orchestrated, he's off his rocker. But am I off my rocker when I say all the countries in the world, you know, they hate each other, even the Middle Eastern countries, Russia, America, China, we all hate each other, but we all agree upon the Antarctic Treaty. Oh, yes, for the good of mankind. Yeah, we're blowing each other up in other parts of the world, but we want to save Antarctica for the good of mankind, and we're not going to violate that treaty. And that treaty, when you ask them what it's all about, it was formed in 1959. All the countries, there are 65 countries that have a treaty that you cannot go into Antarctica without government approval. And if you try, they'll arrest you. It's your Earth. Do you really know what shape it is? Do you really know where Antarctica is? There are a number of theories, but my, my question to you is why? If governments hate each other and people are killing each other all over the world, why would they agree upon that? Wouldn't one of them want to get in there and screw over the other country? Of course. That tells you it's all orchestrated. Every bit of it. And the question I have is what is there that they're trying to hide? They're not doing it to protect natural resources or to protect the whales or to protect the seals or to protect the penguins. No. No. They're doing it to hide something from you. And if you ever, I believe, if you ever crossed into Antarctica, kept going. And I think you can get there from any part of the planet. Any part. And you don't have to go south to do it. You can go west, east, north, south, northwest, and just keep going. And if you could, you'd find what they're hiding. And what they're hiding are billions and billions of dollars they give to NASA to keep the biggest fraud. I always say this. I, once I thought that Waco was the biggest conspiracy. Then I thought Oklahoma City. Then I thought 9-11. Then I thought, oh God, the moon landing. Then I thought, oh, the wars, the orchestrations. What is the biggest hoax? Every one of them. But one of the biggest... I believe, is the information they keep to you about the, even the earth you walk on. So next week I'm going to deal with that subject, but I want to end this week where I began. I spent the whole week basically talking about the Alamo ministry again and showing you you have no freedom of religion, no freedom of speech, and that Christianity really is something not practiced. Vatican calls itself Christian, it's pagan. They hide behind Jesus and God. Our government calls itself Christian. It's pagan. They hide behind Jesus and God. There are groups out there like the Alamo Ministry who worship the Word of God. And they're the ones that are persecuted. So what I thought I would do today is, uh, last couple days, I've had on a gentleman by the name of Bert Krantz, who's a member of the Alamo Ministry for 43 years, and he kind of set the record straight on really what's going on with that raid so forth and so on. You can go back to my shows uh, the last two days and get that. But he has put together a YouTube that I'm going to play the audio section for you. Then I'm going to put the YouTube on my website. And the, find, the thing I find interesting, this is going to be a tape recording of an article written by that pastor of the church who's in jail now for 175 years. And I, and I bet that uh, Mr. Hovind what uh, he's he's also has a show on this uh, or had a show until he was jailed uh, is going to meet the same fate and if you go to other radio broadcasts on this uh, station you'll find they're covering that story about how he is being railroaded and he was a staunch believer of creationism now don't we have the right to believe in those things and to tell people about it no you've got to be an evolutionist you got to be a Pope's evolutionist, and then you're okay. Otherwise, nah, there's no freedom of speech here. And pretty soon, if you don't abide by every word, you're going to be called a terrorist. Every word the Pope wants you to say. If not, you're going to be a terrorist. Oh, and there's so many people out there who have been mystified, brainwashed by what the Pope and what this country and what countries around the world are doing to you that get out of the beast, my friends. Well, anyway, 
What I want to do is play the audio section of this. Bert Krantz is going to narrate it. And it's an article written in the 80s by the pastor that's in jail for 175 years, and it's called The Pope's Secrets. Now, I'm going to put that audio, you'll hear the show, I'll get a, lot, a little, not all of it, because it's about an hour and 16 minutes and 14 seconds long. I'll get part of it today. And then you can go to my website and look at the YouTube. You can see pictures that he put there, makes it easier to watch. I enjoy that myself. Uh, but one thing before I go, when I find that the best YouTubes that really get to the truth have the lowest, lowest uh, following. Let's see if we can get this one up into the millions. Now, the other day I was checking out million hits, what, you know, Christian uh, truthful messages regarding the Vatican, regarding the New World Order, get very few hits. And so I started to look at all these YouTubes, they get million hits or more. And guess what? Oh, you know what America really likes? They like when somebody puts a, this is an interesting one, they put a spoon on their nose, they hold the spoon on their nose, and then they, they put fire in their mouth and they fire breathe. Oh, that got 3.5 hit, 3.5 million hits. Then we got somebody going to the bathroom in the strangest of ways, in a bathtub or something, I have no idea. That got 5 million hits. And, you know, I got one, the largest pancake in the world, 3 million hits. And then if you go to the Kardashians, you know, the, the uh, Satan worshipers, people love that. They get, they get millions and millions of hits, but nobody knows what they're telling you. They, if you look at every one of the Kardashians' shows, they're gonna and Bruce Jenner and all that kind of transgender stuff now, demeaning the American male. You're gonna see all these satanic symbols that the Vatican signs off on, because they have the same ones over in Rome. It's interesting, and those get millions of hits. So we know what the American people like. But anyway, let's finish the week off with Bert Krantz and him narrating a YouTube. You're going to hear the audio, of course. Use your imagination. Close your eyes, and you can see pictures in your head. I'll put this video up on my website. Let's see if we can get a lot of hits. Let's see if we can rival the Kardashians and their pagan symbols. See if we can rival the largest pancake ever made. Or how about the largest pizza ever made? That got like 10 million. Or how about the largest bowl of soup? I saw that one, too. You know, the guy had... 20 million gallons of soup. I mean, who cares? All right, let's listen to Bert Krantz and an article that was written in the 80s by Pastor Tony Alamo called The Pope's Secrets. And let me tell you, I've, I've, I've gone over excerpts of this, and this guy was talking far ahead of his time, and a lot of the things he says there are true today. We'll go to Bert Krantz right now. Yes, we will. Are the IRS, FBI, U.S. Department of Labor, the Mafia, and labor unions part of the Vatican? Is the Pope the super boss of all government agencies as well as the Vatican? The Pope's Secrets by Tony Alamo. This literature was written in 1983. The Vatican is posing as Snow White. But the Bible says that she's a prostitute, the great whore, a cult, Revelation 19.2. She uses government agency branches in every country, including the United States, as her vicious little dwarfs. The more power and control she gets in government, the more she will fade into the background in her snow white disguise, so that government will be used and blamed for all her evil deeds. Reason. To enforce laws that harass, malign, destroy, and censor everyone and every idea that is not Roman Catholic, so she can sit as the satanic queen, the big whore. 
Because of her age-old desire to control the world government and church, the serpent-like Vatican has infested the world and the U.S. government with so many of her zealous, highly trained, and dedicated Jesuit devotees that she now controls the United Nations, which she created. The White House, Congress, every state, federal, civic, and social government agency, including the U.S. Department of Labor, the IRS, the FBI, the Supreme Court, judicial systems, the armed forces, state, federal, and other police, also the international banking and federal reserve systems, called the Illuminati and Agentur, labor unions, the mafia, and most of the heavyweight news media. This cult, the Vatican, is very close to replacing our U.S. Constitution with her one-world satanic canon laws of death to the heretic, anyone who is not Roman Catholic. General Lafayette, President George Washington's most respected aide and general, prophetically stated, if the liberties of the American people are ever destroyed, they will fall by the hand of the Roman Catholic cult's clergy. Today we see the climax of detailed plans given in excerpts from a speech given nearly 50 years ago in Australia by Roman Catholic Archbishop Gilroy. The Roman Catholic motto is ourselves alone for our fellow Roman Catholics. We must defeat all heretics, non-Roman Catholics, at the ballot box. The Holy Father states that negative tactics are fatal. The demands of the Holy Father, the Pope, are that the public services should be 100% Roman Catholic soon. Care must be taken that no suspicion may be raised when Roman Catholics are secretly given more government jobs than Protestants, Jews, and other heretics. Multi-millions of people have been slaughtered by the Vatican, thus saith the Lord. Revelation 18.24 History bears record to this fact. During the Roman Catholic Inquisition in Europe, 68 million people were tortured, maimed, and murdered by this huge sect. The St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre accounted for the butchering of as many as 100,000 Protestants. Abraham Lincoln blamed the papacy for the Civil War in these words. This war would never have been possible without the sinister and secretive influence of the Jesuits. We owe it to Popery that we now see our land reddened with the blood of her noblest sons. Lincoln added, I am for liberty of conscience in its noblest, broadest, and highest sense, but I cannot give liberty of conscience to the Pope and to his followers, the Papists, so long as they tell me through their councils, theologians, and canon laws that their conscience orders them to burn my wife, strangle my children, and cut my throat when they find the opportunity. Because of Abraham Lincoln's many exposés of the Vatican, he was put to death, just as he foretold. Yes, assassinated by the Jesuits under Rome's instructions. The Vatican hasn't changed since Mr. Lincoln's time. JFK's Fatal Mistake When John F. Kennedy was asked by the Vatican, are you going to go along with the Roman canon law or the U.S. Constitution? Mr. Kennedy answered them by saying, the U.S. Constitution. This was President Kennedy's fatal mistake. His assassination was ordered by Rome, then planned and carried out by Jesuits, 
just as President Lincoln's was. Anyone who knew too much about Mr. Kennedy's assassination was taken care of, too. When America cried out for an investigation, Chief Justice Earl Warren, a member of the Vatican's secretive Knights of Columbus, was recruited to do the investigation. He did a lot of double-talking and shuffling, as he was supposed to, and then, after a sufficient period of time, closed the investigation. Like the Pope says, negative actions are fatal. Remember that President Kennedy was a great admirer and student of Abraham Lincoln and knew what Mr. Lincoln knew. World War II, with its casualties of over 30 million deaths, six million Jews, the Holocaust, was conjured up and sponsored by the Vatican. Hitler, Mussolini, and Franco were all members of this sect, the Roman Catholic cult. To win the world not for Christ, but for the Vatican, the Antichrist. The turmoil in Central and South America, the tyranny under Jesuit-trained Castro in Cuba and throughout the Caribbean, and the terrorism in Lebanon and Ireland today are the Vatican's handiwork. Now can you see why God calls the Roman Catholic cult the mother of every abomination on earth? Revelation 17.5 The Vatican knew that after World War II many people were wise to the fact that the war was a Vatican Inquisition. So they had to use one of their famous diversionary tactics and open the John Birch Society to get everybody thinking and talking about communism, which the Vatican also sponsors, instead of the true culprit, the Vatican. This was a great success for them. The Vatican also sponsors every major terrorist group in the world. The reason for this is to keep people's thoughts on unexplainable, insane tragedies that their terrorist groups are committing while the Vatican is busy undermining all governments of the world so they can have world dominion, papal power. When terrorist news hits, it is so shocking that it minimizes the news of the Vatican taking away the U.S. Constitution and of people being deprived of their religious freedoms, being jailed, schools and churches being closed. This is the real thing that the Vatican is after, though. World control of our religion and our government. The more insane, bizarre, unreasonable, and unexplainable the terrorism is, the better. The Vatican's heavyweight news media also keeps you busy thinking about it all. Now that they are exposed with their modus operandi, they will soon, with their media and the President of the United States who just joined them, be the driving force of a campaign to stop all this terrorism that they have created themselves, to make everyone believe that they are good and godly and that they could have never sponsored anything like this. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. 
If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, we're back on the Investigative Journal, and we'll continue with the audio version of Tony Alamo's article called The Pope's Secrets, one that you have to listen to. And this is being narrated by one of his longtime members of his church, his Christian church, Bert Krantz. I want to thank him for doing that. I'm going to put the uh, YouTube up on my website, and hopefully you'll go and look at that, as well as uh, the audio version but it's worth listening to, and we'll continue for the last oh, 24 minutes or so in this week. A rainy week, by the way. Rain seems to come every weekend now. Very unusual in Southern California. But anyway, back with Bert Krantz and the Pope's secrets. Now that they are exposed with their modus operandi, they will soon, with their media and the President of the United States, who just joined them, be the driving force of a campaign to stop all this terrorism that they have created themselves, to make everyone believe that they are good and godly and that they could have never sponsored anything like this. Update, such as Terry Waite negotiating in Lebanon. Jim Jones, a Roman Catholic Jesuit deacon, posing as a Christian, was sacrificed not with poison Kool-Aid, murdered along with his flock by the Vatican to make the world look narrowly and suspiciously upon innocent Christian retreats. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. All these things that God hates, the devilish Vatican is. Did you ever notice that with the Vatican-controlled U.S. Customs and Immigration, we cannot get out of this country without going through the third degree, searches, radar, etc.? But in the 1960s, when Jesuit Vatican-trained Timothy Leary led our nation's youth into drug addiction, Immigration and Customs seemed unable then, as they do now 
to detect tens of thousands of pounds of narcotics and drugs entering into our once fair nation via the Mafia, which launders all of its illicit, ill-gotten gain, all its black market money through the Vatican. Maybe this is why President Abraham Lincoln said, I see a very dark cloud on America's horizon. And that dark cloud is coming from Rome. Look at what the Bible says about the Antichrist that caused all this corruption and shed all this blood. And I saw the woman, the Vatican, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great amazement. Revelation 17, 6. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Revelation 18, 7. These governments have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. That is one world government, state and federal, civic and social government agencies included, powered by Satan, giving that power unto the Antichrist by carrying out her orders. Revelation 17:13. These are some of the very last signs in the Bible's book of Revelation before Jesus comes back to earth again and time shall be no more. God destroyed the world by water, Sodom and Gomorrah by fire and brimstone. On both occasions, God sent messengers preaching the forthcoming doom. Today, God in his infinite mercy warns all Roman Catholics Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Revelation 18.4 If you are one of God's people, obey the word by coming out of her. Why? Because to not do so is disobedience, and disobedience is the same as witchcraft. Many Vatican state and federal government agencies, such as the IRS, OSHA, and the U.S. Department of Labor, along with labor unions, have wonderfully destroyed the economic backbone of our country by harassing and forcing hundreds of businesses and industries into bankruptcy and out of business. This leaves millions of Americans out of work and hungry while Vatican-run enterprises are not harassed at all, but they flourish, because they run the government agencies. Look at what God says about the Antichrist when he will be thrown into hell. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man, the Antichrist, that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. Isaiah 14, 16, and 17. Feds okay Vatican slave labor camps. Just one of the Vatican's many multi-billion dollar enterprises is their liquor and wine slave labor camps, which have no labor problems whatsoever because they unlawfully use free labor. Thousands of Roman Catholic monks. These federal government agencies will not allow anyone else to enjoy the same privileges of volunteering our labor to God, our Father, and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, because we are all heretics, non-Roman Catholics. Yes, their enterprises do prosper with no harm or harassment, using free labor in their Christian Brothers, LaSalle and Benedictine liquor and wine distilleries, slave labor camps, and in many others all the way from Napa Valley, California to New York State. 
The Vatican's IRS and U.S. Department of Labor now cross the constitutional dividing line of separation between church and state, and in every way are attempting to destroy all fundamental Christian churches and schools. One way is by taking away their tax-exempt status. This anti-American, anti-U.S. constitution organization, the IRS, however, has given tax-exempt status to all communist organizations in America under Internal Revenue Code 501c3. They have never made any attempt to take this status away from them. Note, up until 1987, all communist organizations were tax-exempt. Now, because of my literature, they removed the tax-exempt status for all communist parties. However, the Vatican communists are so entrenched into government under the guise of Republicans and Democrats that they no longer need exemptions, not to mention the government grants that are given to their pseudo-charitable groups and multi-billion dollar government grants to parochial schools and other elite Catholic communist organizations. Rome's collection agency, the IRS, has also made sure that the Roman Catholic cult and all those affiliated with it, the One World Church, are the only religious organizations in the U.S. that don't have to pay property tax or even tax on their multi-billion dollar businesses. This is done under Section 892 of the Internal Revenue Code. The Vatican is the only religion that receives multi-millions of dollars of federal aid each year for their parochial schools. This comes out of your tax dollars. Like Archbishop Gilroy says, ourselves alone for fellow Roman Catholics, and we must defeat all heretics. The Vatican has used the Communist Party to help destroy the Russian Orthodox churches, and she used the Nazi party in her attempt to do away with the Jews and their synagogues, because the Vatican says that all others than themselves are heretics, non-Roman Catholics. IRS, Roman Cults Collection Agency. The Roman Catholic Jesuits started the international banking system called the Illuminati and the Agentur and blamed the Jews for this. Rome's motto is, he that holds the money bags runs the nations. The Vatican started all the wars, inquisitions, to rid the world of heretics, non-Roman Catholics, and then made loans from her banks to nations so they would have enough money to fight them. We foolishly permitted this cult's collection agency into our country, the IRS, which answers only to Rome. According to God's law in the Bible, every 50 years there should be a clearing of debts that can't be paid, a relief. This is called the Year of Jubilee. Leviticus 25.10 Let's bump cultish Roman canon law of death and bondage and get back to God's law and his son, Christ Jesus. Let's have a clearing, the year of Jubilee. These debts have been instigated by Satan, the Roman Catholic cult, to hurt us and to put us into financial bondage. We didn't start these wars. We didn't want these wars. We didn't borrow that money. So why should we have to suffer? These wars were all Roman Catholic inquisitions to mold the world into a one-world government, church, and media. At the One World Church Convention in Vancouver, some of our volunteers were shocked by the pro-homosexual booths and literature pro-witchcraft boots and literature, drunkenness and total ungodliness which this universal, world's largest cult and sect exalts. 
These satanic people call anyone that preaches the true word, which is separation from evil, consecration unto good. They call this a cult or a sect, but they worship this one world organization and its cult leader, the Pope, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, or a soon-to-come Pope, as God, will soon sit in the temple of God in Jerusalem, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 10. They kneel and kiss his ring and feet and call him Holy Father, which is forbidden in the Bible. They obey his every wish by calling us a cult who walk in the Spirit and obey God's every wish. They have possibly committed the unpardonable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is never forgiven in this world nor in the world to come. Matthew 12, 31-32 But Satan does not care because he already has blasphemed the Holy Spirit. the mark of the beast. Satan wants you to spend eternity in hell with him. And to cause you to do this, look what he, through his state and federal government agencies, has cooked up for you now. Government enforcement of a law making it necessary for you to take a mark on your hand or your forehead in order to be allowed to buy or sell. This could be done invisibly by using laser beams. God calls this mark the mark of the beast. Revelation 19.20 The Vatican will use some pretty name for it. The mark of peace, love, unity, fellowship, etc. And God says if we take this mark, we will go to hell. Revelation 14.9-11 the Pope, the super boss, and his federal and state government agencies will say that if we don't take this mark, we will be boycotted, can't buy or sell. I'll trust God to feed me, just as he fed the Hebrew children for 40 years in the Sinai Desert. And God will do wonders again for his faithful followers who resist the Pope, his government agencies, and the mark. President Reagan has been bewitched too by the Vatican's craft, just as other world leaders have. This is obvious by his sudden move of sending our U.S. ambassador into the big Roman whorehouse, this cult's home office and general headquarters. Mr. President, you're hanging around far too much with those Jesuit-trained, one-world church ministers, and they're giving you some really bad advice. Is it the Vatican money and the big Vatican backup that's causing you to become part of this cult? Would you sell your eternal soul by joining yourself and our nation to the Antichrist for money and temporal power? The Lord asks, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own eternal soul? Mark 8.36 By having done this, you're now in big trouble with the living God. Lest you straighten up and fly right and publicly recant your decision so that the Lord and the public know where you stand exactly. Respectfully, Mr. President, in the name of Jesus, I say these things to you. We're at the end of time, and the day of the politician is over. We all have to let people know what's in us. The Bible says that he who receiveth not reproof from God's word is brutish. 
Proverbs 12.1. Mr. President and all you presidents and kings of the world, there is a judgment for all of us, and I believe it's coming real soon. A true Israelite believes God. I'm not a theological seminary man. I am a true Israelite, washed in the blood of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, and sent by the Lord to preach Jesus crucified, resurrected, alive, and soon to return to this earth again. I have full authority from heaven to preach this. A true Israelite is one who believes God, which most Jews don't, because they reject the Messiah by rejecting the over 300 scriptures in the Old Testament telling of the Messiah. Some Israelites have converted to this sect, Roman Catholicism. The Vatican wanted them to become rabbis so that they could place them in the Israeli Knesset as spies. Some of these Roman Jesuit rabbis are there today as spies. In World War II, Poland was the strongest Vatican-controlled country. If the Vatican loves Jews so much, then and today, why did she allow the slaughter pens of the most Jews to be in Poland? Why did the Vatican forge the anti-Semitic document, Protocols of the Elders of Zion? blaming the Vatican's desires for world rulership on the Jews? Why did she blame the schemes of the Vatican's international bankers, Illuminati and Agentos, on the Jews? And why does the Vatican have spies posing as rabbis in the Knesset if this anti-Semitic Roman Catholic cult loves the Jews so much? God says, O oh my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Isaiah 3.12 The time of the Messiah's second coming is now, so repent or perish, which means accept the Messiah and the atonement, which is his blood, which he shed for your sins. Or perish, which means you will go to hell if you don't. There are religious leaders who are leading millions of people to hell because of their connection with and exaltation of the Antichrist and his cult. That's something really, really special the Lord has blessed us with tonight. Uh, Tony Palmer, I asked him to come give his testimony and he's got a special message for us tonight. And I said, listen, next week I'm going to Kenneth Copeland Ministries Ministers Conference. I said, there's going to be thousands of leaders, and these guys have their jets. They've got TV shows. And I said, they've got churches of 10,000, 2,000, 20,000. I said, these are big fishes. He said, why don't we make a video? Dear brothers and sisters, mio fratello, un vescovo fratello Tony Palmer, il vostro compagno, il vostro raduno, ho piacere di dire un saluto. E famiglie che non si vogliono, famiglie che si uniscono e famiglie che si separano. E noi siamo un po', mi permetto la parola, separati. Separati perché i peccati ci hanno separati, i nostri peccati. Eh, i malintesi nella storia ma una lunga strada di peccato comunitario io ho la nostalgia che questa separazione finisca e ci dia la comunione io ho la nostalgia di quell'abbraccio di qua noi dobbiamo trovarci come fratelli, facciamo crescere la nostalgia, perché questo ci spingerà a trovarci 
abbracciare e pregare al Signore perché ci unisca tutti e avanti, siamo fratelli, ci diamo spiritualmente questo abbraccio e lasciamo che il Signore... Ok, now I let that play in Italian for one reason. Of course I can understand it, I lived there for seven years and speak Italian. But what the Pope, uh, that's Pope Francis, telling the whole world that we need to hug and let God complete the work that he has begun, his ecumenical movement, accepting everybody in unity, when in fact he wants to destroy anyone that is anti-Roman Catholic and anti-pagan, anti-Satan, anti-New World Order. That's the way they talk. And I'd like you to go to, uh, let's see how much time we got here, I'd like you to go to the video. We'll have to say goodbye for this week, and see you next week on the Investigative Journal. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Thank you.